escape velocity and gravitational potential energy on a planetary scale. We know that the work we do on a system, which is the dot product of force times the distance you move, is equal to the change in energy of that system. We know that gravitational potential energy is equal to mgh, but this presumes you have a constant force of gravity. How do you calculate the change in potential energy when you move far away from a planet and the force of gravity changes as a function of your distance? Where the force of gravity is the product of the two masses divided by the distance between the two centers directed in the negative radial direction. So if this is a radial direction, this guy is directed inward, this guy is directed that way. And in finding this gravitational potential energy, how do we determine the escape velocity? That is, how fast do I need to be going at this point to escape the gravitational potential of this planet and get to infinity? Get free from the planet. So in order to do this, we need to recognize that the work I need to do to move something is equal to its change of energy. And I'm going to derive this expression for gravitational potential energy for a constant gravitational field and then we can apply it to this varying field. So suppose I have a rock on a cliff of some mass m. I know it has more gravitational potential energy than this rock. That energy should be equal to the work I would need to move this rock from the lower position to the upper position. So I can find that expression, the work is equal to force dot dx, and in this case x is h, that I need to apply to this rock to get it up there. So this will go to the change of energy. If I push it really hard, I might gain potential energy and kinetic energy, and be moving very fast at the top. But let's not push it harder than the force of gravity, so there's no kinetic energy. And so I can say here is the mass. Here is the weight, pulling it down, and I'm pushing with the normal force, the force of Pete, upwards with the exact same force. Not because they're Newton's equal and opposite, because they're not, but because I don't want to accelerate this. I don't want to give it any kinetic energy. The work I put in is just turning into potential energy. And so then we can see the force I apply is just equal to mg, and that delta x is just height, and I have mgh is equal to the potential energy I give it. And we add delta H simply because this might not be at zero. We might be calling zero down here. So the work I put in is a change in potential energy, which is equal to mg delta H. And of course, as we expressed before, if I push that rock over, all of that potential energy turns to kinetic energy before it hits the ground, and then it turns to heat. Now I conveniently just dropped this dot product. Am I allowed to do that? Let's see. This is the direction of the force of Pete, and this is the direction of my delta x. Those are parallel, so that that product goes to one and I can drop it. Now how do we solve this when the gravitational field is changing? For instance, we want to know how much work does it take to move this mass from this position to this position. And maybe I take some root like this. The first thing we do is recognize work is equal to the dot product of the force times the displacement. The force is all in the radial direction, so we only care about the radial motion. So for sure, you can say, it takes no work for me to move from here to here, because I'm moving perpendicular to the force, so no work is being done. And this red surface is called an equipotential. Say equipotential. That means all these points have the same potential energy. And so that, that reduces the problem to just finding out how much work it takes to move something from R1 to R2. And we know this must be a higher energy because if we let it go, it would fall and that potential energy would turn to kinetic energy as it's sped up. This reduces the expression to work is equal to the force as a function of radius 
dot dr, the displacement in the radial direction. And because these are parallel, I can now write this just as f as a function of r times dr. So the little bit of work needed to take us from one point to the next now can be written as the product of m1, m2 over r squared times g times dr. And we can see that, yeah, the force of gravity is reduced as we get further away. So this amount of work is going to be less than this amount of work. And what we have to do is take all that little bit of work and integrate it up from r1 to r2. And we have a simple integral. We know how to do this because these are all constants. So they come out. And this is just r to the negative 2. It integrates to negative r to the negative 1. And then we have to evaluate at the limits, r1 and r2. So the change in energy is just equal to this product divided by r1 minus the product divided by r2. The reason they've been changed is because there's this negative here. Let's make sure I did this right. Should there, did I do the dot product right? The force that I apply is in the outward direction and the change in r is also in the outward direction. So this is correct. This is negative and these signs are correct. Let's just check. Does it make sense? If I move to a higher radius, the change in energy should be positive. And so that means if R2 is greater than R1, yes, this will be greater than that, and this is positive. I like it. Now, the extreme is of great interest to us. What if I want to go to infinity? Infinity and beyond. Well, that means this drops out. And this is the total work I need to do in order to get this object away from the gravitational pull of this planet, free. So the question is, how much energy does it have when it's at infinity? To say it's this much energy presumes that the energy on the surface is zero, and it would have this positive energy out there when it's free. But then there's a problem with what energy would it have on the surface of another planet? Or what energy would it have way down in here? And actually what we do is we say that the energy, the potential energy of gravity at infinity is equal to zero. So that means the energy at any smaller radius is going to be negative because we have to do work to get us to zero. So we define the potential energy, not the change in potential energy, but the total gravitational potential energy is equal to negative m1, m2 over r1g. And this is the radius of where you are. And what it tells us is we are in a negative energy potential right here, and we are. We're stuck on the planet. We're not free. We could try to climb out of this gravitational potential. We need rockets to give us a whole bunch of energy till we can be free floating around in space with zero energy. So now what we have, the force of gravity from the Earth, because the force lines separate and spread out in all directions, we have the ubiquitous inverse square law where the force of gravity drops off like r squared because these lines of force get spread out over the surface area of 4 pi r squared. And we have the potential energy equal to this product times 1 over the radius. And it's in the negative direction. Let's check. Because as r gets smaller, we have more and more negative potential energy. The extreme is if r went to zero, would the potential energy go to negative infinity? And that's not true because once you start getting underneath the surface of the planet, the pull of gravity actually decreases rather than increases because there's mass above you pulling you up. So we just say that this works only to the surface of the planet and outside. So let's solve the problem. How about escape velocity? How fast do I have to be going here in order to get to infinity? Or the same is what if there's a big old meteor floating around in space with no kinetic energy and it gets pulled into the Earth's gravitational potential and all of the lost potential energy turns into kinetic energy. How fast is it going? Is it going really fast? So in the situation of needing 
kinetic energy to turn into potential energy, the kinetic energy here would be equal to the potential energy given off when you drop down or the potential energy you would need to provide in order to climb out of that potential well. And that's going to be... And so we can substitute this in, one-half mb squared. That's the kinetic energy of the object on the surface of the Earth when you have no potential energy. This is going to equal mass times the mass of the Earth over r to the first power times g. Again, the force of gravity is ubiquitous inverse square. The potential energy is r to the one power. I can solve this problem using the mass of the Earth, which is a big number, and the gravitational constant, what is it, 6, 7 times 10 to the negative 11th Newton meters squared per kilogram squared. But maybe I just want to be sneaky and make it easy on myself. How about if I multiply by the radius of the Earth times the radius of the Earth, and then I'd have r squared here. And then I see that this is the force of gravity on the Earth's surface, and I know that that's just mg. Isn't that nice? Then this is r, I bring the r down, and I can, I can say one-half mv squared is equal to mg. These cancel, and now I've got v squared is equal to 2g times the radius of the Earth, or v is equal to the square root of this. So this is 2 times about 10 meters per second squared times the radius of the Earth. How do I remember the radius of the Earth? That's a hard number to remember. But we remember the definition of a meter was that this distance from the pole to the equator is equal to 10,000 kilometers. So this is 10 to the 7th meters. And the radius, using pi, you can find is about 64, 6.4 times 10 to the 6th meters. The units are meters squared per second squared, so that's meters per second. I like that. And then we have 10 to the 6th. Square root of that gives me 10 to the 3rd. And then I have 20 times 6.4. That's about 120, 130. So about 11. So we're talking about 1.1 times 10 to the fourth meters per second, or about 11 kilometers a second. That's moving. So this is the escape velocity. If you can get going that fast, you can get to freedom. We are not any longer bound in the potential well of the Earth's gravitational field. Try it.